I drew our family in school today. Oh, wow. Carrie drew two mommies. She told me they're married to each other. You can see the mom's face absolutely fall when she hears such a horrific thing from her daughter, right? My teacher says that all that matters is that people love each other and that they're happy. This is a Jehovah's Witness cartoon called Caleb and Sophia. This actually made its rounds forever ago, this specific episode, because it is so absolutely grotesque and wrong the way that they demonize other people. This episode is called One Man, One Woman. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up again after all these years is because Jehovah's Witnesses have decided to go down this road once again. So I want to talk about this one, talk about Jehovah's Witnesses' view on being gay in the first place, and talk about some of the updated clips that they've released recently to kind of steer their congregation the way they want them to go. So let's watch through one man, one woman, one more time so we got it fresh in our heads, and then talk about the new material they released. So she's looking at a drawing of a fellow classmate's family where one, you know, two moms and then the kid and they're all happy. And this doesn't make sense to her because how can you be happy and gay simultaneously? What? Look, mom. I drew our family in school today. Oh, wow. I didn't have time to finish Caleb's face. <laughs> Carrie drew two mommies. There's her mom's face absolutely falling at the idea that her daughter was exposed to the gay. She told me they're married to each other. My teacher says that all that matters is that people love each other and that they're happy. Hmm. Well, people have their own ideas about what is right and wrong. But what matters is how Jehovah feels. He wants us to be happy, and he knows how we can be happiest. That's why he invented marriage the way he did. Right. Uh, you're talking about how, like, every single major Bible patriarch had, like, 16 wives, right? One man and 16 women. Is that, is that how he invented marriage? That's why he invented marriage the way he did. You mean one man and one woman? Okay, that's not how I remember it. I know that there's one weird little verse in Genesis about that, but I seem to remember... An awful lot of very highly esteemed Bible figures, very well-respected figures, breaking this exact tradition that they're referring to here. Marriage is not, in the Bible, it's not as cut and dry as Jehovah's Witnesses and many others wanted to make it out. But okay, continue. Exactly. Look at Genesis 127. Jehovah created Adam and Eve, male and female. Then in Genesis 2.24, he said that a man will stick to his wife. Later, Jesus said the same thing. Jehovah's standards haven't changed. Well, I mean, Jesus was describing, you know, how people in that culture tend to go about marrying or whatever. He wasn't taking any position on gay marriage. He wasn't taking a position on trans issues or any of that other garbage. Jesus said absolutely nothing about the gay community or the trans community or any of that other stuff. And trust me, they existed at the time. There were people at the time who were gay and trans and whatever else. And Jesus, for some weird reason, didn't seem to think it was relevant. Knowing he's the son of God and people would dissect every word out of his mouth for 2,000 more years, didn't think it was important enough to put in there. Interesting, right? It's kind of like going on an airplane. What would happen if someone wanted to bring something on the plane that wasn't allowed? They couldn't go on the trip. Right. It's the same with Jehovah. He wants us to be his friend and live in paradise forever. Well, if that's what he wanted, he could snap his fingers and do it, right? Why all of this messing around and, and blaming other people for this and that and telling them they have to drop their gay off like a bag at an airport if they want to make it into heaven and all of that other garbage? Why? Well, isn't he all powerful? Can't he just snap his fingers and put us in paradise just like that? I don't understand why he is so hyper focused on everybody's sexuality. Like, why is it that he created the vastness of the universe, created 
massive stars, thousands of times bigger than this planet that we're on, which is massive in its own right, and he is hyper-focused on what you do with the stuff between your legs when you're in your bedroom. But we have to follow his standards to get there. At Matthew 7, 13 and 14, it talks about the road leading to paradise. To get there, Jehovah says we have to leave some things behind. Then remove those things. Why did he give us those things in the first place, if that's the case? And for the record, again, being gay is not like dropping something off like a bag in an airport. It doesn't work that way. Why doesn't he just take it out of our heads and put us in paradise? Why does he want to make us suffer intentionally? This makes no sense at all. And for that matter, if God watched Adam and Eve sin or, or found out that they sinned, why didn't he just quarantine them, give Adam a vasectomy, and create a new breeding pair so that this whole sin thing wouldn't be a problem in the first place? Nothing about this entire situation makes any sense at all. Every step of the way, there are better decisions that God could have made than the ones that are described in the Bible or by Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or any other religion out there. There were better decisions to be made. Now, I'm just some regular old human down here bebopping along and putting the most minimal amount of thought into this situation. God is supposed to be an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise, all-intelligent being, and he didn't think about this stuff at the very beginning? When Adam and Eve very first sinned, he didn't think to himself, you know what, I'll let them live their life. I'm just going to prevent them from reproducing and I'll create a new breeding pair. He didn't think to himself, you know what, there's a tree in that area that if they eat from it, they're going to die. I better put them in America instead of Israel, right? That's probably a better decision. He didn't think about any of this, really? And now he's blaming you for his bad decision making. I just wanna really drive this home and draw out why it's such a ridiculous proposition in the first place. God manufactured this whole situation, all of it, and he's blaming you for the position that you're in. I don't blame Adam and Eve for knowing basically nothing about the world and eating from this tree when they were told by a talking snake, supposedly, that this was safe or whatever. I don't blame gay people for living their lives and enjoying themselves and doing what they want to do. I do, however, blame Jehovah's Witnesses for being hyper-focused on what gay people do with their lives. That means anything Jehovah doesn't approve of. But I want everyone to get to paradise. So does Jehovah. Here's where it gets disturbing. And you know what? People can change. That's why we share his message. So, what can you say to Carrie? What so, what they just did was encourage... I mean, this is propaganda. It's designed for children to take and implement the things that they hear in it, right? They just put in a cartoon, an encouragement for children who are watching to go to school and tell their classmates who might have gay parents or who might be gay themselves that they're wrong and they're going to die in Armageddon if they don't correct course now they need to leave their gay behind like it's a gym bag that's what they just did how many little jehovah's witnesses you think there are running around going to their classmates and repeating this garbage to them after this thing came out how many i mean there are 8.5 million jehovah's witnesses out there right how many of them took this message to heart and decided it was better that they destroy a friendship then this kid die in armageddon thousands certainly right i was one of those children when i was little this tv show wasn't out when i was little so i didn't get this specific message but i was absolutely expected to be anti-lgbt say to carrie well i could tell her about the paradise i could tell her about the animals and the resurrection and if she doesn't fall in line and tell her parents about these things she won't make it to paradise she won't get to experience this stuff she is expected to tell her parents that they are living a sinful lifestyle and if they want to be saved and make it to paradise they have to split up that is some sick shit man seriously and the resurrection that's awesome let's practice 
So anyway, that's the Caleb and Sophia video that really garnered some backlash. That is by no stretch of the imagination the only example of them criticizing the LGBT community or uh, and other ridiculous, stupid issues. Things that don't even matter, like nobody cares. Just let them live their lives, that type of thing, right? They recently came out with a video. This is, I think, Kenneth Cook. He's a governing body member. This is from the February 2023 JW Broadcasting episode, I believe. They have a TV show where they talk about various different issues. Now, before we watch this, I just want to tell you this. Jehovah's Witnesses are completely uninvolved in politics by mandate. They're not allowed to be involved in politics. To the point where they're not allowed to say the Pledge of Allegiance. They're not allowed to join the military. Even if they're just cleaning toilets, they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to vote. They're not allowed to support one political campaign over another. Not allowed to donate to them. Honestly, they're not even really allowed to talk about political candidates. I mean, they can and they won't be disfellowships. But if they express support for one over the other, Trump or Biden or anybody else, they risk disciplinary action. They stay completely separate from politics and always have. Oh, except for that one time the leader wrote a supportive letter to Hitler telling him that he agreed with how he felt about Jews. There, there was that one time, I guess. That was Joseph Rutherford. That's not the subject of the story, though, today. The subject of the story is this weird political issue that Jehovah's Witness governing body member Kenneth Cook decided to get himself involved in. Listen to this. See what he has to say. February 2023. We see it in their so-called gay marriage. We see it in the gender blurring that the world is promoting. You don't have to be a man or a woman, they say. You can be whatever you feel like or choose to be. Really? What does Jehovah say about that? I find it so fascinating that they're bringing this up right now, that they're talking about this, that they're seemingly picking up this political issue, right? It's like they picked up on this culture war issue, this trans panic that does not exist, and they're screaming about it. It's bizarre. It's like the satanic panic from the 1980s. I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the 80s, there were some crazy number, like 17,000 false reports of satanic ritual abuse and stuff at daycares and kindergartens and preschools and stuff. It never happened. Not one of those reports were verified as true. Not one. And there's another moral panic happening on the Republican side right now. The Republican side of politics is saying trans people are trying to take over. They're trying to convert your children to be trans and all this other crazy stuff that's not happening. I'm just wondering where Kenneth Cook is getting his news sources because this is so out of the ordinary for them to get involved in a moral panic that's taking place in American society. What does Jehovah say about that? At Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5, he told the nation of Israel that, quote, a woman must not put on the clothing of a man, nor should a man wear the clothing of a woman. They actually use this as the pretext to not allow people to dress up as like the opposite sex in their dramas or in their movies that they produce or whatever other thing. You're not allowed to dress up as a man if you're a woman or vice versa. And that means you can't, not even for theater. It's crazy to, to the degree that they'll go. It's just nuts, man. For anyone doing so is detestable to Jehovah your God. If that is how the creator feels about the switching of clothing, how much more detestable he must view the world's attempts to blur the lines of gender with false labeling. Like, can't people just live their f***ing lives and do what they want to do? Like, who cares? You know, there's something called the F scale. I don't know if you guys have heard this or not. If you watch me regularly, you probably have, but I'm going to say it again anyways. The F scale is a personality test developed in 1947 by a guy named Theodore W. Adorno. It's basically intended to measure an authoritarian personality. Remember, this is 1947 after World War II. The idea was to gauge whether a person was likely to side with authoritarian extremist regimes after World War II. Here are some of the qualities you can expect in somebody who's willing to side with an authoritarian dictator or, or an extremist, like we saw in World War II. Conformity to traditional societal norms and values, an obsession with religion and ethics, obsession with superstition, with power and toughness, 
rejection of all inwardness, of the subjective, the imaginative, the tender-minded, of self-criticism. And here's one of the more important ones right here. Exaggerated concern with sexual goings-on. Can't people just mind their own business and live their lives and do their thing and not engage in this ridiculous moral panic? I don't understand. Why are they so obsessed with this stuff? Recently, the World Health Organization adjusted its view of gender. It now states that, quote, there are many genders existing on a spectrum from male to female. It added that gender identity exists on a continuum and that sex is not limited to male or female. Again, really? I mean, is that even true that the, the WHO said that? I always, always, always go with science, no matter what. If science says that gender is on a spectrum or a, a continuum or whatever, that's what it is. You know why? Because science is how we come to know things objectively. Science deals strictly with facts and logic, and that's it. Now, if scientists run studies and talk to people and psychologists determine that gender is on a spectrum, gender is on a spectrum. Simple as that. And even if it weren't, why do you care? Why are you so obsessed with this? It's almost like you have a predisposition or an exaggerated concern with sexual goings on. Who cares? Let people live their lives and do their thing. Why are they so preoccupied with this? It's like they absolutely insist that there's some kind of a like a, a cabal that's out there trying to orchestrate this thing where they're going to destroy society or something. Seriously, why do they care? Why do they care what society thinks or what society's doing? They're supposed to run their own society as Jehovah's Witnesses. They're supposed to be their own government, right? In the end, governments will fall and they'll all come after Jehovah's Witnesses and all that. And they're supposed to be positioned to step in as the makeshift de facto government in the end. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Why do you care what the outside world's doing? Why are you engaging in this moral panic? It is so weird that they got so politically involved. I really wish I knew what this guy's sources of information are. But it's telling that he's engaging in a moral panic like this. It tells me that he's probably involved in, in politics to some degree in his personal life, watches it to some degree, and he's taking in conservative news sources, governing body member of Jehovah's Witnesses. That, in my opinion, that's what we can glean from this. Talk about an attempt to tear apart what Jehovah has made. So then even government agencies on a global scale are getting involved, and they are critical of anyone who does not adopt their warped view. Dude, seriously, I've heard this exact perspective from far-right nutter butters like Kent Hovind and Kenneth Copeland and Hank Kuhneman, televangelists. I mean, legit people, people with mega churches. It's so weird to hear these people engage in this type of language when I hear it so frequently from political actors. Proverbs 19, verse 3, it explains, it is a man's own foolishness that distorts his way and his heart becomes enraged against Jehovah. And going back to marriage, Jehovah instituted the arrangement to be a permanent bond between a man and a woman. At Matthew 19, verses 4 and 5, we read how Jesus emphasized this while he was on the earth. Quoting from Genesis 2, 24, he said this, Have you not read that the one who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and his mother and will stick to his wife, and the two will be one flesh? He made them male and female, and the two will be one flesh. Okay. They See, again, once again, F scale, conformity to traditional societal norms. Can't handle the fact that people deviate a little bit from traditional norms and societal values. Can't people leave, live their own lives, do their own thing? Why do you care? Why does it matter to you? It's like they're obsessed with forcing their worldview. I'm sorry, it's not like that. It is that. They are obsessed with forcing their worldview on everybody around them at any cost. Jehovah's purpose for humans is clear, but Satan's world now says that marriage can be between two men or two women. The horror. That marriage can be between two men or two women. Again, really? We can be certain that promoting this corrupt view is Satan's attempts, part of Satan's attempt to ruin mankind. Or, or bear with me, maybe 
People are just living their f***ing lives. You ever knock that one around the old noggin? You ever consider that? Maybe people just want to do their thing, and it's between consenting adults, so who cares? So, like, right now, Leonardo DiCaprio is being criticized for dating a 19-year-old. He's 50, I think. Throughout history, he has only ever dated people between 19 and 25, I believe. You can look at charts and see that he only dates people in that age range. And when they hit 25, he splits up with them and then dates the next 19-year-old. And yeah, you know, I get that's weird. It's kind of weird, right? But guess what? Who cares? Two consenting adults. They can do whatever they want, right? It's creepy and strange. But whatever. Do your thing, man. I'm not your dad. Be my guest. As long as it's between two consenting adults, who cares? It's like that old joke. You look outside and you see blood splattering all over the inside of your neighbor's basement window. And you ask yourself, what's the neighbor doing? The answer is minding his own business. <laughs> Part of Satan's attempt to ruin mankind, to make them so abhorrent to Jehovah that he would abandon humans and his purpose for mankind and the earth. He would, oh wait, Jehovah would abandon his purpose for mankind on earth. What? I thought he never changed his mind. I thought the plan was set in stone. I thought that he had a master plan that was going to be like executed from the beginning of time to now, right? What happened to all of that? That's weird. Is it possible for him to abandon mankind? But that will never happen. God's purpose for mankind and their home will be fulfilled. Just like the disgusting names of the false gods that humans have given to the literal planets, the false labeling of human... Oh my god, he's upset that people named the planets like Mercury and Mars and Jupiter. They're, I think they're Roman gods, aren't they? They're from like the Roman pantheon. Yeah, from the Roman pantheon is what most of the planets were named after, apparently. That's really funny. God, he, they get so bent out of shape over the smallest, most insignificant stuff, don't they? Seriously, I know from personal experience, they absolutely get bent out of shape over stupid stuff. I mean, I was raised in it until like 18 years old. Just like the disgusting names of the false gods that humans have given to the literal planets, the false labeling of humankind and the immorality will not continue. For his own namesake and for those who love him, Jehovah will bring to ruin those ruining the earth. Okay, and I guess that's trans people, right? Trans people, gay people, anybody who is to the left of hunting the homeless for sport. That's that's a problem, right? Out of curiosity, I, I wanted to like look up what their positions were on trans issues or gay issues, basically LGBT issues in general, right? Now, we saw the Caleb and Sophia video at the beginning, and we obviously heard what he had to say just now, but I want to see on record what they had to say about this subject. So I went to their like their library, their online library thing, and just kind of typed in trans, I think, and I came up with some kind of disturbing stuff. This one is from The Awake magazine in 1974. Now, this is not outdated in Jehovah's Witnesses theology. This is st this still applies today. This is still valid if people believe that they're trans, they come to Watchtower Online Library and they find this and it's still used in the theology to establish their active position. So let's read it. I want to read this, but there are th words in here that are considered slurs today. I don't know if they were considered slurs at the time or not, but either way, they have no respect for the trans community. We just heard what they had to say about it, so don't give them any slack for that reason. But I am going to replace the words to be more, more modern interpretations or more modern versions of what they should be. Oh, wow. Check this one out. Who are homosexuals is the title of this article from Jehovah's Witnesses Awake in 1976. First of all, it is wise to get some distinctions clearly in mind. Not all homosexuals are to be confused with, well, some of these words are slurs now, so I'm going to replace them with the more common words that we use today. Don't give them a pass on the fact that these were not slurs at the time necessarily, though. They would still happily use them. They have no respect for the trans community now. Not all homosexuals are to be confused with trans people or transgender people. The latter is a person who may wish he were of the opposite sex and who may even dress and carry on as though they were. Some individuals go as far as to become transgender. I guess they're saying somebody who has had the operation. So what they're saying is 
there's a spectrum, uh, apparently. Jehovah's Witnesses in 1976 believed that there's a spectrum. You start out on this end of the spectrum as just a little gay, like maybe even bi, right? You, maybe you're just a little bit bi. And as you move further and further along the spectrum, you're super gay. Ew, women are gross. Oh, God, I love guys. Okay, and now I'm trans. That seems to be like Jehovah's Witnesses view of the spectrum. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, it's painful. It's so stupid, it's painful. So anyway, that's Jehovah's Witnesses for you. The trans phenomenon. An intersex is an unfortunate person whose sex is ambiguous by birth. And a trans... I'm just trying to read it as it's written, replacing the words. And a transgender, on the other hand, is one who, for psychiatric, quote-unquote, reasons, decides to undergo surgery and be physically changed from one sex to another. Regarding the latter, the comments of Albert Rosenfeld, science edu- uh, I'm sorry, science editor of Saturday Review slash World. I have no idea who Robert Rosenfeld is or what Science Review World is or why I should care, but okay. The words of this guy are apparently appropriate. I have been surprised to hear so little debate or discussion about the ethics of surgical sex change for purely psychiatric reasons. The transsexual phenomenon points up to our propensity for underrating people's willingness to accept circumstances they would once have considered outlandish and for underestimating the speed at which the, at which this process occurs. The speed at which the process occurs? What's he talking about? Well, I guess that's Jehovah's Witnesses position on the subject, right? Let me just point something out. Uh, the ethics of surgical sex change. I mean, this is an argument that's been trotted out by Republicans for like a long, long time now. And apparently this argument's been around since 1974. If Jehovah's Witnesses are repeating it, this is the argument, the prevailing argument right now. People feel like something's not quite right. So they start presenting as a different gender. What is wrong with that? Seriously, can not people live their lives, do their thing without being harassed constantly by Republicans or Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or anybody else? Why can't they just live their lives? You know, when I left Jehovah's Witnesses, it's been a very restrictive religion for decades and decades. It controlled every aspect of my life, every aspect. When I left it behind, I had choices. I had to decide when I left. Am I going to try alcohol? Am I going to try smoking weed? I had to decide, am I going to celebrate birthdays? Am I, go- am I going to present as a woman? Am I going to be trans? Am I going to be gay? These things cross your mind when your life is so restrictive to the degree that Jehovah's Witnesses' lives are restrictive. Now, some of those things I chose. I celebrated birthdays. I celebrated Christmas when I left. Some of those other things I didn't choose. Being trans, being gay. You know why? Because it wasn't up to me. I had complete and total freedom to present as a woman if I wanted. But guess what? I didn't want to. Because I'm not. They seem to be obsessed and hyper-focused on the idea that everybody, every man, wants to be a woman secretly. And if they spread this idea around enough that you can be a woman, if you want, then everybody, every single person will become a woman. Every man will become a woman if they find out it's possible. Complete and total absurdity outside of logic. Jordan Peterson actually did a debate or whatever with Kyle Kalinske a little while back on this issue and made some wild, bizarre claims about it. Listen to what he had to say here. If you agree that adults can decide to transition, then why would the physician be criminal? Don't adults have that right if they want to transition? Complete dead silence. I actually have this sped up 1.5, so it's like 50% faster. And it's just dead silence for like 10 seconds or something. Not everything legal isn't criminal. Um, No, that's inaccurate. If it's legal, it's not criminal and vice versa. That's how the legal system works. You can say not everything that's legal is moral, but by definition, things that are legal are not criminal. And do they have that right? See, I would have left Paige alone if she hadn't been parading her new- It's Elliot Page. Elliot Page came out as trans recently, and Jordan Peterson decided to come out here and attack him, try to destroy his reputation, 
and complain about all this other garbage. But we're getting to the point here. Keep listening. How many kids do you think she can convince to convert? This is the point right here. How many kids do you think could be converted by one public trans person? A one? Yeah, thousand? No, not See, yeah. I, no, no, really? I want to I respond to that. I think that with the trans community, it's very similar to the gay community, where back when that first became a big issue, people thought, oh, if we talk about it, if it's in magazines or whatever, we're promoting kids to go down that path. But really what happened is people are who they are. And that if they're gay, they just decided to be no. like, yeah, I'm gay. That is what happened. Are, are you hearing this? This guy supposedly has a PhD in psychology, and he's saying gay people were converted to be gay by other gay people coming out and being public about the fact that they're gay. You wouldn't be gay. Unless you knew somebody else that was gay. You must be joking. This is the same mindset that Jehovah's Witnesses have. How did Jehovah's Witnesses get sucked into... I mean, the, the governing body member, Kenneth Cook. How did he get sucked into this political view? This blows me away. There's another point I wanted to hit with this video, though. Keep listening. And honest with themselves. I don't think you're promoting people to do that. No, that's just not saying, what happened. If you you're are that, it's okay. Wrong. Okay, well, you're I'm, utterly I'm, I'm wrong. Listening. There's I'm nothing listening. about that that's right. Then prove it. He's so completely full of Quack. everything that he says is dumb as dog. Quack. Everything out of this guy's mouth. I knew the literature on psychogenic epidemics. They used to call that mass hysteria. And it's a literature that goes back about 300 years. No, it's literature that is 300 years old. The psychogenic thing is a claim that people can pick up a, a psychotic episode. They can pick up mental diseases by proxy by just being in a room with somebody it's pseudoscience they had no idea what they were talking about 300 years ago this isn't something that's been studied for 300 years it's something that was studied 300 years ago that jordan peterson used as the pretext to back up the idea that people will catch the gay if they're in the room with another gay seriously you can't tell me that he didn't know that. He looked this literature up, saw it was 300 years old, saw that it was medically fucking ridiculous that somebody can catch a mental condition by being in the same room. You can't tell me he didn't know that was bullshit. And he's out here parading it around. Whenever you introduce, often when you introduce social confusion, you can produce a psychogenic epidemic, especially among... There, there's no such thing as a psychogenic epidemic. Again, 300-year-old literature, none of this has been validated in modern times. Generally, it's adolescent females who are most susceptible to it. So I thought, oh, well, what's going to happen is we'll produce a psychogenic epidemic of gender dysphoria among adolescent females. And that is exactly what's happened. And it isn't the fact that we freed up people who are, what, in doubt about their identity to be who they are. Okay, that's a positive claim. It is not that this happened. Prove it then. Of course he's not going to. Of course he's never offered a lick of evidence. He doesn't need evidence for his followers to believe everything that he says. How many kids are getting this surgery? Do you know the number? It's zero. You're not allowed to get trans-affirming surgeries, bottom surgery, top surgery, or whatever, until way later. You have to be working with psychologists for like a long, years and years before you can get any kind of surgeries. And to my knowledge, there is nowhere in the country that will give trans-affirming surgery to somebody that's under 18. And if you're under, say, 14, it doesn't matter anyways. There's no affirming surgery that you could get anyways, like mastectomies or whatever, because you don't have breasts before a certain age. But logic doesn't matter in these cases, right? Look, I read a corporate analysis of the trans-surgery industry last week. Growth rate projection for you lefty types and your anti-corporatism. Growth rate projection, 15% per year. Invest now, a $350 million business as of 2022, projected to expand to $750 million by 2027. No moral hazard there? Uh, what? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, that's what I was looking for in this clip. Oh my God, this is ridiculous, dude. So the, the guy is saying the medical industry is profiting off of trans-affirming surgeries and that's why they're doing it was for money? And it's going to grow by 15% per year. How long until it's at 100%? And you heard him earlier. He said psychogenic episodes. He believes that being trans isn't real. That's what he seems to believe. Being trans is not real. It is only caused by other people around you also being trans because you are catching this mental disorder 
just by virtue of being in a room with somebody who had it, not talking to them, not communicating, not having conversation, not spreading an idea. No, 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 no. This is about being in close proximity physically. You have a neighbor and you're on one side of a wall and your trans neighbors on the other side of a wall. You can catch this from them. That's what this psychogenic episode thing is that Jordan Peterson is describing. I am dead f***ing serious, okay? I looked up the literature he's talking about. Anyway, that's the idea behind trans hate in conservative circles. That's the premise that they work off of to hate the trans community. And you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds an awful lot like Jehovah's Witnesses' position on organ transplants from back in like the 1960s, 1970s. Everything that Jordan Peterson just said was complete and total, unadulterated pseudoscience, not based in reality in any way, but none of that matters. Jehovah's Witnesses' position on organ transplants has been very similar. Check this out. This is jwfacts.com. Fantastic website, by the by. Love this guy. Uh, Paul Grundy, I think is his name. Awesome dude. Really built something incredible on this website. Anyways, Watchtower 1961, August 1st, page 480. Questions from readers. Is there anything in the Bible against giving one's eyes after death to be transplanted to some living person? LC, United States. This is straight from the Watchtower. This is the Watchtower Society telling you how they feel about transplants in 1961. The question of placing one's body or parts of one's body at the disposal of men of science or doctors at one's death for purposes of scientific experimentation or replacement in others is frowned upon by certain religious bodies. However, it does not seem that any scriptural principle or law is involved. It, therefore, is something that each individual must decide for himself. So conscience matter, i.e., it's okay. If you want to donate your organs or whatever to somebody, that's okay. 1961. Six years later, 1967, they flipped. 1975. A particular factor sometimes noted is a so-called personality transplant. That is, the recipient in some cases has seemed to adopt certain personality factors of the person from whom the organ came. They believed in 1975 that if you receive a liver transplant from somebody, you will take on the personality traits of that person. 1980, there is no biblical command pointedly forbidding the taking in of another human tissue. It is a matter for personal decision. Flip-flop, flip-flop with absolutely absurd reasoning on both ends. Every time they flip-flopped, there was absurd reasoning. This should tell you something about how Jehovah's Witnesses view the world and why I feel the conservative viewpoint and the Jehovah's Witness viewpoint, particularly on trans issues, is bull****. It's garbage from beginning to end, all of it. And it only serves to hurt other people, nothing more. These people contribute nothing of value to society. They have no place to receive tax-exempt status. They do nothing but harm the people around them. They should be paying taxes. And it's absolutely egregious to me that they're not. For what it's worth, Jehovah's Witnesses did have their tax-exempt status or their status as a religion removed in Norway recently. I intend to talk about that later. That means they're not receiving subsidies as a religious organization. So that's a plus, I suppose. We need to do something here in the United States. We need to remove their tax-exempt status. Jehovah's Witnesses want only a very specific set of people in. They don't want to deal with living around scumbags like people who don't love Jehovah, apostates, gay people. They don't want scumbags in their little paradise with them. That's the way they view it. And it's just, you know, you don't know what it feels like to be persecuted until you're actually persecuted, until you're mistreated for some intrinsic quality about you, like being disfellowshipped from Jehovah's Witnesses and being mistreated by them for who you are. You don't know what it's like until you experience it, and it hurts. You know why it really matters to them? Because of the F scale, an obsession with religion and ethics, 
with superstition, with power and toughness, conformity to traditional societal norms, conventionalism, exaggerated concern with sexual goings on. They have to control every aspect of your life. And they have to make sure everyone else's lives are controlled too. It's not fair for somebody to live their life and enjoy it. Absolutely disgusting. The grotesque positions, not based in science in any way, that these people hold. And they are actively hurting the people around them. We must remove their tax-exempt status. Let me know what you think about it in the comments.